Hello everyone, my name is Trevor aka TJV and I'm here to talk about Spider-Man No Way Home. If you have not seen this movie yet, which is unlikely, I don't know why you would click on a spoiler review if you haven't seen the movie, this is your one chance to click away and go watch the movie. And yes, I totally recommend you going to watch the movie, even if you think you've gotten spoiled already and there's no point of you going to go see it, please go see the movie, it's a great experience, I'm going to be talking about that experience and how others can possibly relate. So try to watch Spider-Man No Way Home if you can in a local movie theater and if you're not able to hopefully it comes around to you eventually in terms of a streaming service or to your local theater but regardless let's move into spider-man no way home and before i get into too many spoilers or anything like that i do want to say i'm not going to bring up every crucial scene i'm not going to bring up every major character i'm not going to bring up everything in this review. This is mainly just me sitting here bringing up important parts of the story to be able to explain my review, my explanation, why I like it, why I didn't like it, etc, etc. So if I didn't bring up something that you wanted me to talk about, just comment that right down below and I will be able to bring it up some point during a live stream where we're going to talk about open spoilers, theories, and all this other stuff. And you guys are going to be able to sit here and help me talk about all parts of this movie. Theories, breakdowns, easter eggs, scenes, characters, and other stuff I did not talk Talk about in this movie. But regardless, let's move into the spoiler review of Spider-Man No Way Home. Spider-Man No Way Home has been a long time. Like, I, I remember, like, hearing about this movie, like, a year, over a year ago. And, oh my god, the reports on it, the early reports that Toby and Andrew were gonna be in it, Alfred Molina, like, joining the cast, Jamie Foxx, Jamie Foxx posting on his Instagram, and he wasn't supposed to post that on his Instagram, so he deleted it and took it down. There was, like, so much building up to this movie, and it was all fan excitement. Like, the the fans were digging and digging and digging and wanting to know more and they almost like wanted to be spoiled but at the same time we kind of expected okay if Toby and Andrew are in the film Sony and Marvel are gonna bank on that and put it in a trailer but they never did and yes they're in the movie and oh my god that is just amazing let me get the Toby and Andrew thing out of the way it's amazing but it's amazing to the point where I see a lot of people be bringing this up and this is sort of why I waited to show my spoiler review and talk about it is because I really wanted to just digest on like what I thought of it instead of it just being super hype or excitement like I saw people putting out spoiler reviews like Thursday night opening night most places some people couldn't even get out to the theater that night and you're already putting your spoiler review up what like I, I don't get that so I waited until Monday and I just I gotta say the Toby and Andrew thing's still cool but what's even cooler about it is you start to sit here and realize wow they're not just cameos they're they're not just in there for fan service. They're in there to serve a purpose to the story, to help our Peter Parker, the Tom Holland Peter Parker, through his journey. And I appreciate that they're not just, you know, cameos and stuff. They're actual legit side characters that mean something to the story. And if you take them out, you can't just replace them with another Spider-Man. It has to be their iterations of it to help them. It does awesome callbacks to the other movies. So if you're a Spidey fan, you've been watching all these Spidey franchises over the years, you will definitely like it and it's it's really good moving on what did i think of like doc ock green goblin electro lizard sandman and i see a lot of people wanting to talk about the villains in their spoiler talk or in their normal reviews and stuff like that but they don't want to bring up like the lizard and sandman so let me start there first off i don't think the sandman or the lizard or those two actors were not in the movie at all they definitely comped them in with old shots it looks like and they like avoided using much dialogue you know from those movies at all and they probably got some to sound just like you know Flint Marco from the third Spider-Man movie to come in and do the voice but it definitely wasn't the actor who was in the third Spider-Man movie because the way they're comped in and the way they have interactions in the third act of the film definitely seems weird let me know down in the comment section below if you notice that but nonetheless I really like the lizard and Sandman I I, I like all the scenes I like the dialogue I those two characters I was almost more excited for than the Doc Ock Green Goblin stuff because we've had had a lot of that stuff and that stuff was great but what we didn't have a lot of is Sandman and Lizard and I was so happy to see them come back those characters and be able to work in somehow the actors from those movies even though they probably weren't available to shoot something or look the same or be a part of it maybe they just didn't want to pay them to come back they just somehow got them in the movie the way they did and I really appreciate that Jamie Foxx's Electro oh, ooh. I was expecting more of the like nerdy side of him, the scientific, the 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 lonely side of him, but no, he was kind of 
badass. And I wasn't expecting that. But I liked it nonetheless. I liked the new look. I know a lot of people are complaining on like, wait, Electro didn't even know Peter Parker's identity. Why, why did he get drawn into there? Blah, 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 blah. I want to make a video talking about why a lot of this doesn't make sense, but there's probably an explanation for all of it. I don't know. I liked him in there. He gave great performances. I'm not really going to complain much. I will say it was a slight distraction while I was watching the movie that his look is different. They didn't really put much work into explaining that. Don't know why he's in this reality if he didn't know who Peter was from the beginning and we actually get him to bring up that he didn't know Peter by saying, oh, I thought you were going to be black. Well, if you didn't know who Peter Parker was, why did you get drawn into this reality? It doesn't matter. Regardless, I liked Jamie Foxx's performance as Electro. I liked the character of Electro in the movie. I thought it was pretty good. And oh my god, the twist of where Doc Ock shows up, grabs both the Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, and then he like grabs Electro and like he's on the good side. That I loved that right there. And everything to do with Doc Ock, I really like. Alfred Molina really sat here and brought back his performance to become Doc Ock like he was back in Spider-Man 2 and carry it farther than that. And then the little reunion between Doc Ock and Toby. It's just... Mwah. Willem Dafoe. He's been getting so much hype um, for this, so, so much applause for it, and it's definitely just. He deserves every little bit of it. For me, I really like the fact that they brought back the brutalness of Spider-Man, that last fight between Tobey Maguire and Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin. The final fight between Willem Dafoe and Tobey Maguire in the end of the first Spider-Man movie, that was just brutal. It was nuts, and they brought a lot of that brutalness back, and apparently Willem Dafoe did a lot of his own stunts. Props to him. And the fact that he sat here and went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Tom Holland and they had an amazing, brutal, t t actually two amazing brutal fight scenes. That is just crazy. It's nuts. And I love every bit of it. I love the supporting cast too in like Ned and Zendaya and stuff like that. I, I really do. I've always liked Zendaya's character. It was new. It wasn't the same old, I oh, I love you. I'm going to get right in the middle of the battle. It didn't feel like she was ever forced into a fight or into a scene in the previous movie. Same thing with Ned. He was never forced into a scene or forced into a dire situation where Spider-Man had to save him, except for this movie. It definitely seems like he can't close the portal all of a sudden and then the lizard chasing him and then they have to portal into the fight scene and then they can interact with Doctor Strange and then she can fall off and be caught. No, don't get me wrong, it leads to great moments like Andrew Garfield catching her and oh my god, that was like such a good callback to The Amazing Spider-Man 2, which actually when I went to go see it in theaters, I liked it, but I was 14 years old. Keep that in mind. Now that I'm older, I can see the flaws in that movie, but I still love it. I love all the Spider-Man movies. I know the uh, third one gets a bad rap, maybe Spider-Man 2 gets a bad rap, but... I love every bit of one of them. Every bit of one of them. Every bit of them. But I just feel like MJ and Ned were just like forced into the third act. And again, it led to great moments. I don't care. But there's a lot of things in the movie where you're just like, oh, that's the way we're going okay and it doesn't take a lot away from the movie it's just a small thing that i noticed and i was like oh i, I guess you need to do that you know we, we gotta have stakes we gotta have andrew garfield catch her so like yeah it makes sense i feel like there could be a really creative way to like reorganize this movie still have all the same beats a lot of the same moments but just make it make more sense and there's a version of that that's gonna be out there people are gonna watch this movie analyze it go crazy and opening weekend for this movie was the third all-time biggest opening weekend for any movie so it's gonna it's a big movie people are gonna want to sit here and have fun with it re-edit it re-edit the film sit here redo scenes all this other stuff and i cannot wait for like hd quality videos of this to go out on youtube final thoughts on the movie i don't know i mean i I, I liked every scene. It was flowing good. I, I see a lot of people making this comparison in their reviews saying the first half of the movie was your good classic Tom Holland Spider-Man movie. The final is like fan service. It's so much fun. It's awesome. It's a great popcorn flick. Yada, yada, yada. And I disagree with that completely. I feel like Spider-Man No Way Home is something where it's on its own pedestal. And the only reason why, because it's not like a Sam Raimi Spider-Man movie. It's not like a Mark Webb Spider-Man movie. 
and it's not like our recent Tom Holland Spider-Man movies we have been getting. I don't see this as Spider-Man Homecoming as the first one, Spider-Man Far From Home, and then this being the end of the trilogy. I don't, I don't see it that way. I see this as its own separate film, and this is a film we've been wanting to get for a while, a live-action Spider-Verse movie, and this is sort of what it is. Yes, it picks up from where Far From Home left off, and it continues Tom Holland's Peter Parker's character, but it does that for a lot of characters. We see the progression in Andrew Garfield, and that's what makes him not a cameo but an actual legit side character who's going through a story same thing with toby Otto octavius the green goblin this is a story about a lot more than just tom holland's peter with tom holland's peter being the forefront of the movie and the main character it's still a movie where it progresses multiple people's stories even max dylan electra at the end of it you see that he says i'm all tapped out and he feels like he's gonna go back to being a nobody such a good callback but then andrew garfield's out here and goes you were never a nobody i mean cinema this is just awesome martin scorsese might sit here and disagree with me but that is pure cinema andrew garfield was acting his fucking heart out it was so good but like i said it doesn't feel like a third tom holland spider-man movie and i don't want to say the first half feels like it either because it's not we get daredevil right from the beginning which is blowing all of our minds away and yes it's dealing with mainly those characters but in the first half of the movie we're still dealing with the other villains and doctor strange and it also feels like a prequel to doctor Doctor Strange in the Multiverse Madness. See, what this movie is, is Avengers Endgame. Avengers Endgame, like, just your classic, oh, it's your Avengers movie. No, this is like multiple story threads and movies all in one. It's a prequel for this, but it's a sequel to this, and it's calling back this, and it's doing this. That is what Spider-Man No Way Home is. It's all these things wrapped up, and we love these movies. Yes, we love them, but we also love our more simple movies too, like Shang-Chi, if you like the Eternals, Black Widow, your first Iron Man movie, Captain America the Winter Soldier, your Sam Raimi Spider-Man 2, your Dark night movie whatever you like and whatever is a simple story about it one main character or a main character and a villain for example i love black panther but black panther ain't pulling in a bunch of different things to make this big event of a movie it's just a great movie and spider-man no way home is a great movie and i love the movie it's just it pulls in a lot so it doesn't feel like a third tom holland spider-man movie it feels like a live action spider-verse movie and it deserves to be on its own pedal pedestal i think i don't really want to compare it to the other spider-man movies but since it is a spider-man movie i will compare it if we're just talking about our spider-verse movies we had we've only had two of them into the spider-verse and spider-man no way home i would say into the spider-verse is number one with spider-man no way home number two it's a close number two but the only reason why i say that is spider-man into the spider-verse is more of a cohesive wrapped with a perfect bow type thing and spider-man no way home was like okay let's put really nice paper but we can skip the bow because the bow is fine that's the only reason why i think in of the spider verse is number one because they have the nice bow on top nobody will probably get that but it makes sense in my head trust me but ranking this beyond all spider-man movies i think this is like number three of all time spider-man movies in my opinion the box office is gonna show otherwise but i think spider-man 2 sam raimi spider-man 2 is just a perfectly wrapped with a bow type movie then into the spider versus number two for me and then number three being spider-man no way home but regardless that's my review i'm trying to think of anything else <laughs> trying to think is there anything else i forgot but regardless if i missed anything make sure to comment that down below i will make sure to do a live stream where we're going to do a live spoiler talk where we're going to open up talk about spoilers you guys talk in the chat i talk right here and we go back and forth we talk about spoilers for however long we can we probably can do it for 12 hours straight if you guys want to do it and honestly i wouldn't mind if we did that so comment down below what you thought of the movie what you think i should sit here and talk about during the live stream theories did you like it did you not like it is it your favorite spider-man movie where does it rank for you comment Comment that all down below. Make sure to like this video if you liked it. Share it around if you'd like to as well. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Thank you for turning into my review. And I will give Spider-Man a home because I like giving the numbers out of 10. Most people don't, but I do. It's always fun. I will give it a good 9 out of 10. It's a really great, solid movie. It seems impossible to pull off, but they did it in great fashion. Major props to John Watts, Tom Holland, all the characters, Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, everybody else involved in the movie, Kevin Feige, and the people over at Sony, and any other people at marvel who has been involved benedict cumberbatch the entire cast and crew great job you made a solid movie thank you guys and i will see you guys all next time peace